right, I'm doing the blooper in the beginning and I just recorded a whole 15 minute audio section that totally dropped out. That's going to be a rent video that's coming up on a piece of software that has failed me over and over and over. So I'm re-recording this. Ah, anyway, here we go again. Hi everybody, this is Fox Nomad and today I want to help you travel smarter. So have you ever been in an airport or in an Airbnb and you just can't connect to the Wi-Fi or the connection is slow and it's really frustrating? That happens a lot, especially in Airbnbs where you don't know where the router is. The router might not actually be in the apartment. It might be in the floor above or below you and the connection speeds are really slow. Well, these are five ways to increase your wireless range when you're traveling that can help you at airports, at Airbnbs, or when the connection is just generally crappy. All right, so the first one is pretty simple and that's plug in your laptop. So if you're connecting via a laptop, you're gonna wanna plug it in. This even works on a phone as well. And the reason is because when your machine is using battery power, it's gonna cut power from the things that use the most power, the biggest resource hogs. And one of those is the Wi-Fi adapter. So the more power that's put into a Wi-Fi adapter, the more range that it's gonna have. So it's gonna be able to get those wireless connections that are sort of on the edge of its range but when power is in short supply or it's running on battery, what it's going to do is try to cut back on that range to give you a little bit more battery power for everything else that the device can do. One way to get around this little obstacle is to plug in your laptop or your phone and that's going to extend your wireless range just a little bit, about 10%, but that's going to be a significant difference when the router or wherever you're connecting to is just out of range. And when you're just out of range, that's going to cause the Wi-Fi adapter to use more power to try to connect to that far away signal. So it's sort of like when you're listening to a whisper from a distance across the room, you're going to have to concentrate a lot harder to get more of the message that's coming across. Someone's screaming in your ear, you don't really have to do anything. You might have to cover your ears or something like that. So you've got too much signal. But when you're a little bit far away and it's hard to hear, then that's going to be like what your laptop is going through. It's got to concentrate really, really, really hard to get enough of the signal to be useful, but all that concentration requires energy, which comes in the form of your battery life. Now, the second way to increase your wireless range is also a pretty easy hack. I see a lot of people sitting at airports on the walls. What they do is they maybe move a meter to the left or a meter to the right, and you see them sort of fidgeting around to get a better Wi-Fi connection. When in reality, what they should be doing or should be trying is to turn around 360. So if the router is basically positioned behind you and the signals are coming behind you and your laptop is in your lap, your body is going to be absorbing some of those radio waves. And by doing so, it's going to cut out that signal now, when the signal is strong, it's not going to make much of a difference. But when the signal is weak, doing a 360 and maybe actually facing that wall might help. Or if you're out in the open, instead of going a seat to the left or a seat to the right, try doing a 360 to see if you can't get a better connection to the Wi-Fi network. Now, the third way to increase your wireless range is actually one of my favorites. It's one of my favorite tools, and that's a USB wireless antenna. Now, a USB wireless antenna obviously has a pretty large antenna, and it can put out more power than your typical wireless adapter in your laptop. These are pretty simple to use. You just plug them in, install the drivers, and then make sure that your operating system is configured to use that wireless card instead of the one that's built into your laptop. And that's going to increase your overall wireless range about 10 to 30 percent. And these wireless cards have some actual other features as well but putting those aside what they will do is increase your wireless range pretty significantly like I said 10 to 30 percent that's going to help you get those wi-fi networks that are just out of range now if you remember my first one which is plug in your laptop all that range does come at a price so it's going to eat away at your battery much quicker so if you have the opportunity make sure to plug in your laptop when you use one of these I'm going to link to my favorite one in the description below that's made by alpha you can check that out they're not very expensive so I'll make sure to link to that in the description below so you can check it out if you want to pick one up for your next trip now the fourth thing you can do is use a program to find hidden wireless networks. So typically when you're looking for Wi-Fi, you're going to open up your Wi-Fi software on your machine. You're going to see all these SSIDs and you're going to connect to one that doesn't have a password or if you have the password, connect to that one. You're usually looking for the strongest signal strength, but you're not actually seeing all of the possible Wi-Fi networks. So in a lot of airports, what they do is they hide that SSID, they hide that network name so that you can't see it, but it's still there. You can download a free program called NetStumbler or KissMac for Mac. 
use those and that's going to uncover all those hidden Wi-Fi networks. You can also download my app Wi-Fox that's also going to show you the hidden wireless networks. A lot of those are used for maintenance or other internal things in the airport. They almost always don't have a password associated with them so you can connect to those if you're really in a tight crunch in an airport. Now the fifth thing you can do to increase your wireless range is when you're scoping for a spot in the airport is to look for metallic surfaces. So especially, I've noticed this a lot in Europe, so you'll notice that a lot of the walls, especially with adverts, have a steel or aluminum plating that's on the outside of the wall. And what you wanna do is sit one to three meters in front of that wall if you're not in a corridor or something like that so you don't get trampled. But if you have that space, you wanna sit about one to three meters in front of any wall that has a metallic surface or that's a mirror or that's a reflective surface. Now, the reason this works is because when Wi-Fi signals hit these types of surfaces, they tend to spread out in a pattern that hits the ground about one to three meters in front of that wall. So the signals are coming to the wall and then they're bouncing back. And at the height you happen to be sitting either on the floor in a low seat, you're gonna be getting the best signal about one to three meters from those kind of surfaces. So a lot of times when people are sitting on the floor by the wall, they're not getting the strongest signal. They might be missing the best parts of the signal. And if you're not too close to the router, that distance, that little bit of Wi-Fi signal might be just enough to either get you online or have you miss out completely. So make sure to sit about one to three meters in front of any wall that's got a metallic plating or a mirror plating or anything like that. If you can get a seat ideally, that's great. Make sure you don't get trampled and you should be good to go. So I hope these tricks help you get online, especially in places where you can't get a strong wireless signal, like a lot of airports or Airbnb where you don't have access to the router. There's another program that I didn't mention called NetSpot. And what NetSpot does is it basically allows you to map an entire area so you can see a sort of heat map of the strength of wireless signals in your home, Airbnb or in an airport. It's pretty time consuming. I don't recommend it, but if you've got like a 12 hour layover and you're bored, you might want to map one of these out and upload them to share with other travelers. It might also help if you've got a long-term rental in an Airbnb, so you can map out the entire home. It can also help you find where the wireless router might be. A lot of times, like I said, I've noticed in Airbnbs that you don't always have access to the router. So the owner of the apartment that you're staying in might be above you or below you in an apartment the router might be there so you don't have access to the router you might not know exactly where the router is but if you use netspot or something like that then you can try to find based on that heat map where the wi-fi router is and obviously the closer you are to that the better signal you're going to have so let me know if you have any questions in the comments below i'm also going to link to the usb wireless antenna in the description make sure you hit the like and subscribe buttons while you're down there check out the merch and i will see you in the next video